In this video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about antenna resonance, do-it-yourself TV antennas, and things you should know if you're going to design your own antenna. Now, my interest in antennas started out when I was just a little kid and I got my first walkie-talkie, and I noticed that on the back there was a warning that it would be illegal to hook up an antenna bigger than the antenna that came with the walkie-talkie. So naturally, I did what a lot of kids would do. I went and got myself a long piece of wire and I attached it to the antenna, thinking that the walkie-talkie was going to go much further and what I ended up discovering was that it didn't necessarily work that way. Just having a bigger antenna alone didn't guarantee that the transmitter was going to go any further. And what it boiled down to is that every antenna has to be cut to what they call resonance. It has to be cut to the exact length to effectively radiate the energy you're trying to transmit. The same that goes with a receiver. If you're building a TV antenna, you want to have an antenna that's cut as close to the resonant frequency you're receiving as possible. And what I put together here is a little series of antennas that have an LED in the middle that are capable of lighting up when I transmit. And I was going to show, for example, when I transmit with my little walkie-talkie here, you'll notice that only a light comes on on the bottom there. That's because this antenna on the bottom is designed for this particular frequency, which happens to be 146.520 megahertz. On the other hand, I've got this other walkie-talkie here. This is on the FRS frequency. It's going to transmit about 462 megahertz. And you might note that only this light comes on here now. The same would be true with all these lights here. And uh, it basically demonstrates a principle of resonance. Now, just because these other antennas aren't cut to resonance doesn't mean it won't pick up the signal, but it won't pick it up as well. So when you're building a TV antenna, for example, you want to have it as close to resonance as possible. Now, when the manufacturers build TV antennas, they don't have the option of designing an antenna that's ideal at just one frequency because television spectrum covers a whole multitude of frequencies. So you have to build an antenna that's going to pick up several different frequencies, and it's always a compromise when you do that. Nevertheless, these engineers spend enough time, and they come up with some pretty good antennas to get a, a variety of different frequencies, even though the antenna isn't designed to work ideally on just one frequency. Now, if you were going to build an antenna designed for just one frequency, there's actually formulas you can use here. In fact, these formulas are common formulas that ham radio operators use when they build antennas because uh, <clears throat> what will happen is if you transmit into an antenna that's not cut to the right length, even if it's a quarter inch too big, some of the energy that you're trying to transmit will be reflected back into the transmitter and it can actually cause some problems and less energy will be radiated outward. So these formulas here that you can use are for what you call half-wave dipole antennas. And that's essentially what I've got in my hand here. And that's pretty much what these are here too. The only difference is these ones here have a little LED in the middle of them just to help me uh, do this demonstration here. But basically, if I wanted to hook an antenna or a piece of coax onto this connector here, this would actually be a halfway decent antenna for some frequencies. Now, it's not going to have a lot of gain to it because it's just two elements coming off here. And uh, same with these ones here. So when the manufacturer makes an antenna, they usually build them with a variety of different elements to help reflect the signal and concentrate it and give it some directionality. Here, for example, here we've got a wine guard antenna. You can see this is more than just a dipole. It's got a reflective element behind it as well. And that helps give the antenna some directionality. Anyway, I thought I'd talk about the formulas here and explain how you can make your own antenna, if you so choose. And the first one is the, uh, the formula here that will give you the length in inches for your antenna. So, for example, if you wanted to make an antenna that uh, picked up channel 34, which is a UHF channel, it happens to be 593 megahertz, you divide the 593 into this number here, which would give you 4 four and three quarter inches and uh, on this other formula here this gives you length and feet so if you're going to build a much larger antenna and you want to know length and feet rather than inches you can divide the frequency you're building an antenna for into this number here and that will give you the length and feet whereas this is the length in inches now you might notice here that the the shorter the frequency or the higher the frequency rather the shorter the antenna and uh, here, for example, we've got one that operates on a ham radio frequency of 146 megahertz. It's about 19 inches, and I had to curl it over because it was so long. But let's say I wanted to make one for the CB frequency, for example. 
for CB frequency or channel 20, which would be 27.205 megahertz, uh, you would simply divide that frequency into here and it would give you about 104 inches. And that's about the, uh, the length of a full-size web antenna you might see on vehicles from time to time. Um, something like this, on the other hand, I don't know what frequency this would be resonant at. Uh, the only reason I have loops in the end here, by the way, is just because it came that way. I don't have to have them looped up. But, uh, you know, another antenna that worked quite well is a loop antenna like this. Now, believe it or not, this is a pretty decent antenna. And having a ballon on the, on the end here works pretty good, too. This is one that doesn't have a ballon, whereas this one helps transfer the energy because of the uh, impedance matching. I'm not going to go into the, on this particular video here. Uh, but basically, impedance matching allows your, your received energy to um, effectively be transmitted into your, or carried into your TV more efficiently than if you didn't have an antenna ballon like this. And these, these antennas do have some directional properties. In fact, if the transmitter was down here and you turned it like this, this would be a null point where the signal would be weakest, where if you wanted to pick it up a little better, you'd turn like this. Uh, although this antenna would now be picking up in this direction, upward and downward, whereas if you go like this, the signal will get weaker. Anyway, I've made quite a few antennas over the years, and it's kind of fun to experiment. Um, I've uh, always liked to figure out which is the most ideal antenna when I'm out doing TV antennas for people. This one here is made by Weingard. I believe they call it the Free Vision, and it's a pretty decent antenna. I believe this one's specifically designed for UHF, if I'm not mistaken, where others are designed for VHF and UHF. Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. As always, if you do, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. This is a bow tie antenna. And even these things here, these have to be cut to the right length. You know, another guy years ago told me he used to cut these down just a little bit to to help get certain frequencies to come in. He cut some of the elements a little shorter on bow tie antennas if he was trying to pick up a particular channel. I wouldn't know where to begin with something like that, but uh, I guess that could be done.